This is one of the strangest and most unbelievable stories I've ever done on my channel. I love Queens of the Stone Age, but whoever thought this was a good idea must have been out of their minds. It came out over a decade ago that the band was supposed to play an intimate show at a rehab clinic, but was thrown out even before they performed one full song. Let's explore what happened in today's video. Queens of the Stone Age arose from the ashes of stoner rock band Caius, who I've done a whole video on, the link is down below. Following his time in Caius, guitarist Josh Homme joined the Screaming Trees as a touring guitarist. Side note, I've also done a whole video about the Screaming Trees' volatile career, again the link is down below. Following his time in Screaming Trees, Homme would found a new group called Gamma Ray, which would morph into Queens of the Stone Age in the late 90s. They'd go on to become one of the most successful rock acts of the last two decades, it would come out in 2007 that Queens of the Stone Age would be booted from a rehab facility in Los Angeles after the group was supposed to play an intimate six song set. A spokesperson for the band would tell Enemy Magazine that the band opened the show with their classic song Feel Good Hit of the Summer from the group's second album Rated R. The song's lyrics consist of repeating lines about substances, some legal and some illegal, and the band doesn't denounce or endorse the substances but rather leaves their stance neutral on the track. The rehab clinic staff was so angered they cut the power during the band's performance and had security throw the group out of the building. The irony of the whole thing is that the song, according to Enemy, was used by the Colorado Police Department in their instructional videos to talk about the dangers of driving under the influence. Feel Good Hit of the Summer opened Queens of the Stone Age 2000 album Rated R and was released as a second single from the record. The song reportedly came about after a three-day drug binge Hami went on to ring in the new millennium. He would reveal to Mojo Magazine in September of 2010. Nick Oliveri and I had gone out to Joshua Tree just before New Year's 2000 and stayed at a place called 29 Palms Inn. Out of that came Feel Good Hit of the Summer. Feel Good Hit was such a great way to start that record. It said, look out, here we come. Chris Goss, who worked extensively with Caius and was the producer for Rated R, told Modern Guitars Magazine, well, Feel Good was the number one single in Europe. They took it exactly as it was. It was a joke. It's a really funny song. When we recorded that album, that song was kind of like an afterthought. Josh was going to throw a few seconds of that chant in at the end of the record, and I said, no man, that rocks. And it ended up opening the record, he'd recall. Unbeknownst to a lot of people, Rob Halford of Judas Priest also sang backing vocals on part of the song. When the lyrics were supposedly shown to Halford, he would recall, as a rock and roll cocktail, I know this one. Rated R would get rave reviews with Enemy and Kerrang listing it as the best album of 2000. And Hami would reveal in several interviews that Feel Good Hit of the Summer was recorded and released as a social experiment to see how the public and the media would react to it. He would tell the LA Times, how do people react when you say things that are uncomfortable? The song will be censored, but there isn't a single curse word in it. I just want to hang it out there and leave it for the court of public opinion to decide. In addition to that, he would claim the song was written to poke fun at the band's stoner rock label, telling Guitar World in 2006, Feel Good Hit of the Summer might be like a knife in the neck of stoner rock. It's hard to tell, and I think that's the good part about it. Look, you're always going to get labeled with something. Stoner Rock is kind of a dumbing down label, and that's why I don't gravitate towards it. The band would also run into other trouble with the song. Due to the lyrical nature of the track, many radio stations refused to play the single, and it never charted in America. Hami would tell Rolling Stone, We're getting this feedback that lots of people won't even play it. They don't look at it in a very positive light. Some people would think the band were endorsing drugs, but if you look at the lyrics, they're not. But according to the book Queens of the Stone Age, No One Knows, Hami would admit he's a libertarian when it comes to drugs. In addition to radio stations, Walmart refused to sell the album unless the song was removed. However, Hami was able to talk Walmart into stocking the album with the song, as he argued that by being titled Rated R, that served as enough of a warning to customers. Walmart would agree and decided to carry the record. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.